Now we've changed the farming practice from the plough base system using min till in order to try and reduce the amount of traffic on farms and reduce compaction. And I've now started to introduce cover crops in advance of the spring barley crops in order to help improve my worm count. And that's something I'm going to be monitoring over the next few years. We've taken off the spring barley straw, but otherwise we chop a large amount of the wheat straw with the aim of improving our soil organic matter. And we monitor that every three years and we've seen an increase in the organic matter and that helps with water retention, particularly in these dry conditions that we've been suffering. So we moved into a field of wheat. Uh, this is Siskin drilled late September. Um, quite forward for this time of year, but it was a mild winter. The frost have really dealt with any disease on the bottom leaves. So little intervention for us now, probably right into April. This is one of the heavier clays on the farm and you can see that simply by rolling it into a ball and it's firm and it's, it holds a shape. So you could polish that um, and that will certainly sit as clay. The last thing we want to do is compact it and compress it. So it's nice if you can look in some of this organic matter that's been pulled down and these roots that are right the way through. Some of this is bean holm, which has been pulled in by the, by the worms. And if I pull this here, you'll see there's a worm cast pulled this all together, this straw, this crop residue. Take the wheat plant out of the way and that will be pulled down. And there's the, the deep burrowing worm hole right the way through that profile where my finger is. So that's great to see these natural channels being created by worms, even though the worm is not here. Um, we know that this soils function nicely. And you can see the rest of it, all the roots that some of this is, some of this will be wheat roots, but a lot of this will be um, residue from, from previous years, cover crops and, uh, and the wide rotation that we're now farming. So, and there, if you just look here where I've broken that open, there's, there's worms everywhere. So there's a worm just here where my finger is. There's a worm, there's a worm. There's another one working away in here. There's three. There's wormies just down here, which are pulling all these roots, pulling all this debris together. You've got different types. You can just see the worm casting where the worms have been through. See that channel that's smoothing through the soil. So that's really, really, really rich nutrients. Wherever the worms are working, that's the richest part of the soil. And the last thing we want to do is come in and, and, and cultivate this um, next year. So when this wheat crop's finished and we've harvested this, in August, um, we will come in here and direct rid a cover crop, and that cover crop um, will be there to continue um, the the nutrients for the soil, continue creating that food, keeping those sugars harvesting from the sun, keep feeding that soil biome. And there's another worm, nice and busy. So it's really, really encouraging to see this, and uh, I'm convinced this is uh, moving forward nicely because we've um, reduced our cultivations and reduced our inputs. Well, this, this particular field was in um, uh, summer cauliflower. Um, so we, we harvested uh, cauliflower off this field in July. Um, and then first week of August, uh, when the crop was finished, it was um, lightly dissed over um, and then we lightly dissed in the, the, the cover crop of uh, Phacelia, linseed and clover. Um, we've been doing this for two or three years now and we've noticed a, a, a great improvement in the soil structure and the, the amount of wildlife uh, such as worms um, and all the stuff you can see. Um, so the, 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 the soil health is definitely improving through this practice. We are seeing a, a, an impact on the, the following crop. Um, they're tending to get more, more even now, um, more healthy. For a shovel full, you see more worms. So they're all, all busy, all being protected by the, by the cover crop above them. And, you know, some lovely crumbly pre-soil here. 
By covering the soil with something like forage rye or another cereal type mix, uh, intercepts heavy rainfall, catches nutrients that could potentially leach from the system and might also provide a nutritional benefit for grazing livestock later in the season. By capturing more sunlight and growing more plants through the winter time, we're actually increasing the amount of soil organic matter within the field. Over time the nutrients will break down and that will feed the humus in the soil, the bacteria and the fungi, creating a much more diverse habitat, ultimately ending up in more earthworms. The earthworms can help drainage and, uh, and recycling of nutrients in a faster state within the field. Cover crops can bring many other benefits as well. It's a fantastic late season pollination source and things like fodder radishes. This year we had butterflies and bees right up into November. Here we have a fodder radish that we've just pulled up from the, uh, the trial site here um, and actually the end was snapped off so that root was continuing to penetrate the soil and uh, you can see by the straightness of it that there's no soil compaction issues here and uh, this is a fantastic route for going down and um, taking up nutrients deeper into the soil and actually recycling them back up to where the next crop and the subsequent crop will be able to, uh, to be able to utilise them. We're mainly a dairy farm and we use the cows to graze the grass but we also try and harvest the nutrients that they put into the grassland. The field I'm standing in has been in grassland now for five years and it is getting less productive with grass and clover and more productive with docks and dandelions. I'll take a cut of silage off this field in May and then so probably two crops on it. One will be kale for the cows to graze in the autumn on part of the field and on the rest we'll put in peas and barley which are a fantastic crop to make into silage being high in starch and protein for winter feed. Once we've harvested those crops in the autumn we'll mint in the residues, create a stale seed bed and then plant winter wheat. We introduced the livestock, the sheep, to the farm about five or six years ago now. Uh, we wanted to get some grass lays into our rotation. We've taken out areas of unproductive arable land and put into grassland. Yeah, this is the second grass uh, field we've put into a grass lay. Um, and, and certainly in the first field that we did, we really saw the organic matter levels go up uh, from when it went from an arable field uh, into a grass grass laying them back to an arable field again. Um, you can see through the root mat there, uh, it's definitely restructuring um, and, and putting some good organic matter back into the soil. Uh, see we've got our little worm friend there. So since we've introduced the grass lays back into the arable rotation as well, we, we've seen a, a few different species uh, move, of birds move back into the farm. Uh, you can probably hear the skylarks up above, although we've always had them uh, with the arable fields. Uh, when you walk through the grass fields, it's just a constant sing from them. Uh, we've also, in the last few years, since the grass has been back here as well, red kites have moved back into the area. Uh, and as you come down the drive past the, the grass field, there's always thousands of, of field fairs out there at this time of year as well. So this is our kale field, one of, one of about 48 hectares of kale we grow annually. This year we've got a surplus of kale, so we're actually allocating to cows. This is a classic example of uh, how integrated farm management fits into our business, where, where basically you know, this crop has been grown using digestate from the AD plant, so it's all been fed by manure, no fertiliser at all into it. So these cows uh, are basically getting a metre a day, then are putting manure back onto the fields, ready for the next crop to come back in, which will be spring barley. And uh, the, the rotation then forms part of cleaning, ready for grass re-entry uh, in two years' time. The whole thing, as I say, is a holistic system where goes round in circles and, uh, and helps each other. Around all our arable fields we have margins and this protects the hedgerows 
and the watercourses from any possible contamination from plant protection products or fertilizer and it also prevents any of the soil from the field running off and getting into the dike. I'm now standing at the bottom of quite a steep field which is uh, subject to runoff and this has had a cover crop in it over winter and we've grazed sheep on it and now we've planted linseed in the field uh, and the tram lines are all running across the slope so if you look behind me the uh, the rainwater if it rains heavily doesn't run straight down the field it gets stopped by the little ridges and as well as having this buffer strip at the bottom to stop any runoff going into the ditch in front of me we've also planted this with pollen and nectar mix that will be blooming later on in the spring and in the summer and attracting lots of uh, pollinators and beneficial insects. So this is a margin next to uh, a water course. It also provides excellent habitat for invertebrates and small mammals. And we often see barn owls hunting along these strips to prey on the, uh, the small mammals that like to live here. So this is a pond we, uh, we restored for great crested newts. Cleared away some of the vegetation and made some banks behind so that the uh, the newts and other amphibians can uh, come out of the water to uh, to sun themselves to warm up here i am stood in front of one of our second year wild bird mixes uh, this is predominantly made up of kale we run through here in uh, mid-may when we know there's some rain coming with some uh, millet as well to so that we can try and provide some some grain as well with the second year rather than just the kale seeds. It's absolutely buzzing with bees and other insect life at the moment. Um, and uh, if I turn around, you will also have a look down the valley and you'll see that the crop of oilseed rape is behind that. Uh, and again, this harbour for insects helps, uh, helps both, both crops. <laughs> 